Chelsea tips. Stradbroke day. We've got Eagle Farm and Sandown to get stuck into the Beavers here. Off the back of another pretty good weekend, or bar the Oaks itself. It was a, a good day out for the boys. How are you travelling, Beaver? Yeah, good, thanks, Daggy. Yeah, uh, positive uh, results last weekend, and uh, we were firing, particularly early on in the day. I mean, that's what you want to be doing, and uh, didn't finish off too bad as well. So, good outcome. Uh, I'm sure the punters that followed us would have finished ahead on the day, and uh, we look forward to Stratty Day. Uh, looks like a good day. It's actually... Wouldn't, wouldn't mind going to Eagle Farm and uh, going to Australia, I think. It's one of the, um, yeah, it's just one of those races I always liked. I don't know what it is, just always really enjoyed Stradbrokes and the days. It's actually a pretty good day for a couple we could nail it in the market and then and a couple out wide as well, which um, hopefully means we're finishing in front. We will, yeah, we'll look at Eagle Farm. Rails 4.5 metres, beautiful conditions. Um, it looks like perfect weather, no rain, so... Obviously, it's third week in a row, so as long as the track holds up, I'm thinking it should play okay. And probably, as usual, sort of off the rails by the end of the day. But we kick off with a mile wait for age listed race, the Wayne Wilson, and I'll let you uh, open the batting. Yeah, obviously, whether Freedom Rally starts or not is um, going to be a little bit of a key here. Um, and Jay Mack aboard, who was flying there last weekend, um, I still think probably... Uh, under two dollars is a little bit skinny. I'm going to go for I know a star mm-hmm. um, purely on the basis. Uh, first race of the day, he's going to jump in front. Timmy Clark's going to put it out to a bit of a lead, and it's going to try and hold on. I don't think there's a lot of chases here. Um, it's a pretty ordinary field outside of probably the top two, maybe maybe three. Um, so I know a star, definitely a freedom rally doesn't start, I think uh, is a very good bet um, and might run a bold race even if it does. I, I've i got the same too. Yeah, I, I thought freedom rally was obvious. Obviously, J-Mac jumps on, sat outside the lead there last time and crossed the line with In Secret, uh, who we know is a top horse. Oh, that was a really big run actually and fits really well here. And I was terrified of I know a star, mile specialist, um, who gets almost control. I don't think there's any other pace here except the bush horse, Master Jamie. So, yeah, they're the two for me. I was waiting for you to make a case for Poison Chalice. Uh, you letting that one go through this week? Had enough? Oh, look, I, I think it's a chance in third up, but, um, yeah, maybe just a class below these. The only other horse I'll even mention, I thought Charterhouse's resumption was better than it reads. It only got out late and was pretty good, but um, the market sort of found it anyway, so there's no, no real surprises there. The second is a 1,200-metre listed race, and Pareel, uh, as we forecast, spanked them. When it dropped back in grade last time, uh, J Max sticks gets a nice run. It should all be pretty similar here. Um, I think it wins yeah. again. Miss Hellfire will try hard as she always does, and Dalalat will run well enough fresh for the miners. I thought, but yeah, Perilla best of the day for me. Yeah, it'll spank these as well. Cool. The third is the listed race for the two year olds, which is the Ox Laid Stakes. Who have you found here? Yeah, this is a tricky race to line up some of these. Um, really, really, really hard to line up. The sort of four or five in the market are, are quite close in the market. And then a couple, just a double figures that, that can run well. I've gone for Don't Forget Jack. Mm-hmm. I just like the way it's progressing. Um, won well at uh, Musselbrook and then went to Doombin um, to show that that was no fluke. Uh, carried 58 and a half, was well backed and... Uh, was a good run, so I'm going to I'm going to take it on the basis that it's got uh, more room for improvements, um, and then a couple of odds. I thought a couple of dangers might be depth of character from the Nisham stable. Thought that was a good first up win and can run well, and then Peace Centre uh, from the Friedman stable. I also thought that was a good win. So double figure odds, uh, a couple for the exotics. Yeah, there's lots of bits and pieces here which means I don't really want to stamp it. It's a little, it feels a little short for me, but I thought Embassy was a great a great run in the lead-up. Sat three wide outside lead there and was brave. Uh, I don't think there's a great deal of pace on paper here, so at least, you know, if Blake Shin, uh, in a world where some of these jockey rakes are concerning, Blake Shin, if there isn't any pace, will take it up, uh, put itself in the race. So I'm going to put it on top. I agree, depth of character was some sort of win at to round him up at Canterbury. Uh, I'll make it the main danger, but and I, I didn't mind Peace Centre either. But little bits and pieces where I can't be overly confident. 
Yeah, the Snowden stable is definitely going better than what it was um, during that time ago. Yeah, exactly. We've got the 3200 metre group to Brisbane Cup up next. And I have found myself tipping Allegra on here. I thought it was really good last week with the gap back to third. And it, I think it just gets a great run, lob straight behind the two gay runners who are going to push forward. And uh, if it does, is in just the right spot to run well. And I'm going to say the only danger I really could come up with, uh, the 3,200 metre specialist, Ahmad, who comes off winning, or it's running all of the Cups this, in the last couple of months, Brisbane Cup, I mean, Adelaide Cup, Sydney Cup, and then won the Sandan Cup, did beat a bunch of walkers. Um, a few of them needed hurdles in front of them, but... Uh, he's up and going and run well again here. I'm just sort of sick of most of these, to be honest. So that's all I've got to say. Yeah, I've gone for Amade as well. Um, it is a 10-year-old. It makes me uh, a little nervous, but uh, seems to be going well enough. And uh, last three starts over 3,200. We know it's going to run the distance. Um, it's one eleven out of 34 starts. So uh, it doesn't go too bad. And, again, one last start over this distance. So I've got it. I think it's um, a nice bet. As you said, Allegra went well last start. And I think Captain Nembius, um, that that did a little bit last start and uh, slow going probably wasn't ideal. Um, gets back to the good here, can run well. I just thought mostly Cloudy was too short. I agree. Uh, For a horse that doesn't win. Yeah. The fifth is a three-year-old Group 3 Guns in Classic over a mile. And oh, I'll make a case here. I, I think there's two chances. I talk myself into being keen on this race. I think ge- uh, geriatrics, the mile, will suit. Uh, should end it up after being very impressive, ran him up at 1,400 metre last time out. And I think base is loaded, is now ready to go. It, it was good first up off a year, um, then went and didn't have a great deal of luck sitting wide last start. Uh, I think the mile... Last time was at a mile, ran second to militarise in a group one. So uh, third up, ready to peak. I think you can get, what, about six or seven bucks for both of them. I'll cover them and I'll throw the two Godolphin horses into the early quaddy raises and a Mer. Um, I'm starting to get the feeling a Mer is just a run on sprinter and they've got it a bit wrong. But anyway, it's 20 to one, so going to quaddy. What are you thinking? Um, I went the same way. I, I liked Jealous Tricks's. Um Win last start, I thought it hit the line really strongly. I think it'll be improved by that with its first run under its belt here. Um, I'm quite keen it can run well. And I thought you had the right, the right danger. Bases loaded is third up here. Obviously, gate 15 needs a little bit of luck, so it needs just to get across and into into a good position in the running line. But I thought those two held, held the key for sure. And uh, 5 and $7, I think you can play both. Absolutely. And I was disappointed uh, Miss Aria didn't make the trip up because I think it would have been a live chance. Absolutely. I'm happy to I'm happy to risk raises. It can win, but um, doesn't like to win often. No. The six is the first of the group ones. The JJ Atkins stakes over the mile. For the two-year-olds, who have you come up with? Oh, I think this is fairly straightforward here. Broadsiding looks all the rage here. And uh, gate two looks ideal. Uh can pretty much get to wherever it wants to sit in the running. 1,600 is not going to be a problem and uh, it's certainly going to be uh, super hard to beat. Um, I think Amelia's can run well yep. at 16s. I know it got nutted last start, but it had to do all the work and was the sitting shot for the other one. Um, I think from the gate six here in this field, it's going to get a much better run. So happy to uh, see it as having a, a genuine chance as well. Same, same. It'll win. Broad siding, top horse. Uh, it keeps getting better. I think I was reading, I saw that they're talking about Cox Plate next year for it. So they've realised that they've got a bit of an opinion of it. Uh, and I, if I'm throwing any into some exotics, it'll be the two on the quick backup. Amelius, who you've said, and Imperialist, who beat it. And the, all the rest of the lead up, I think the favourite has well and truly covered. The seventh is the Group 2 Dane Ripper Stakes for the girls. And I'm giving Curve Volante another chance. It was okay first up. Didn't have clear air for a lot of it. Spent the whole time, whole or half the straight, trying to get out more than anything. Coming across heels when it did, I thought it hit line really well. Going to put it on top, and I'm actually going to make the danger Coco Jambu, who I just bypassed altogether before its Australian debut. But that was a nice win. The trial since was fantastic, and is a winner. A nice line chaser here. So 
with some improvement, second up. But at the double figures will make it the main danger. Who have you come up with? This is one hell of an open race. Um, there's massive, massive chances here. Um, you could pick five and six of them and still struggle to find the winner. I'm going to stick with um, a horse that I had opinion of last prep and I have tipped this prep and Comrade Rosa. Um, I think now's D-Day. It's, uh, <coughs> it's third up here. Um I think it now gets out to the right distance over the 1,300 and it'll be hitting the line hard. I thought it finished off nice enough last start and gets to the outside here, runs on hard. I thought Roots could run well. Yeah, it, it's scary here, Roots. Yep. I thought its first up run was very, very good and then um, happy to put a pen through last start uh, in the Group 1 Sangster at Morfittville. Um since had a trial and wasn't asked to do much there. I think he can run well here. Interesting that, that, that Waller's taken it there. Um, suggests to me that it can run well. And you're right, Coco Jambu, I think, is a genuine chance as well. So um, tough race. Uh, they're my plays. The feature is a $3 million Stradbroke. Group one over 1,400 metres. We've got a an odd weight array here, 56 down to a bunch on the minimum. Hey, I'll let you have a crack at this. Well, yeah. um, interesting race. It's really hard to line up because three or four of the really genuine good chances are drawn in the car park. Mm. And I'm trying to work out how that's going to impact their chances. Um, you know, Antino 20, Amanimal 16, Bella Nipotina 21, uh, and Yellow Brick 23. Um, I'm going to settle on Valana. Uh, purely, I just thought that last start win was outstanding um, and gets in here with 53. Um, that's a featherweight for a race like this. Um, gate 14 should be able to get into a decent position. Um, so I've got it on top. Um, the others, it's going to be really hard because Antino, Bella Nipotina, um, yellow brick, they're all going to have to go back um, and they're going to have to produce some sort of a run. Um, I, I have got yellow brick. I'll, I will be backing it if it's 20s, um, 51 and a half, and that was ridden more quietly last start after two really difficult runs sitting wide, um, hit the line beautifully last start. So I think it's it's a genuine chance. Um, and you can't rule out Bella Nipotina that's most recent form has been outstanding at like it's twelve to one, like yeah, it's a good I, price, I, eh? I I did the form. I had Vanilla on top, and then when I saw the price on Bella Nipotina, I have to say it's the best value on the card. It's, yeah. it's like it's A grade form. It just it just got noted by the best sprinter in Australia, best sprinter in the world apparently, uh, or close to it. <laughs> and it's yeah, it's twelve. But the only question mark is um, oh, if you want to say the gate. But I'm I'm treating this like I would an Epsom and those sort of things. Wide gates will sort of look after themselves. But the only question mark is it hasn't won at 1,400 metres, but it was strong at 13. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, I think at 12 bucks it has to be a bet. Uh, for the record, I did have Valana on top two for all the reasons you said. Uh, and gate 14 in a couple probably just gets a right run. And the other one um, I'll mention is Samana, who was going really well last prep, keeps going around at a price. Again, it's 20s, uh, goes in the quaddy, goes in everything I do. Uh, freshened up trial since. I suspect this... Or the other Mayor's Group 1 race in a couple of weeks will be its goal for the campaign um, over the odds. But good little race. Uh, and there's a few here. Great race. For the first time, though, I reckon a lot of those real on the real limit weights just aren't good enough to, to catch some of the better horses. So, yeah, uh, but even Antino, like it's a genuine chance. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And so is Ma- Magic Time. And a half, got, um, 20. It's a genuine t- chance. Magic Time got galloped on, I think, by the winner last time out. So you can forgive that a yep. little bit. And Benedetta just won a group one. So I, I'm graduate. I'm, I'm gravitating to the, the top four here in terms of when I get the McCordy, but um, interested to see it all play out. The ninth is the Q22, group two, uh, for whatever millions of dollars it's worth, uh, 1.2. Uh, another one at a price here that I was a little bit surprised by, Spirit Ridge just gets control here. There's no pace it and Boyd Argent get to wander across under their own steam get to take up a price and uh, it's $23 I'm going to put it on top 
Uh, Boy Dachant, I don't think gets as easy a time as it did last time out, but there's a live chance. Uh, but looking elsewhere for dangers away from the, the 20s chance, I thought Amakura only got warmed up very, very late last time out. Can improve, might want a bit further, but we'll throw it in. And I'm scared of Adelaide River, pulled up with AIPH last time out. J-Mac has jumped on it. Uh, he doesn't get on mugs, so I suggest should it be here in one piece, it does have some proper form and can improve sharply. Who are you thinking of? Yeah, good race again. I've come up with a couple here. Um, look, Faulkner Park is a horse that I do have um, uh, a good opinion of and recent form suggests it's going to be ready to run well here. Uh, flew home last start, uh, probably should have probably gone close to winning that race mm -hmm. um, over the 2000. The 2200 will definitely suit. I did have it on top. My main danger, I had number three, Light Inventory Man. Yes. Um, I thought it was pretty good um, when resuming in the scone, at scone, I think it was, uh, in a in a race there. Came from pretty well back on the turn there and uh, flew home only two lengths behind the winner, carrying 61 kilos, so 59 here. Um, this is perfectly lined up for this. I wouldn't let it get under your guard at $13. I thought it could run a very nice race as the main danger to the favourite. I agree. Um, it goes, yeah, it, well, I'll get to my quaddie now. It goes in. Let's kick off with first leg, one broad siding, six imperialist and 11 China C, the sneaky John Sargent Ruffy. Second leg, one roots, two revolutionary miss, Four Coco Jambu, six Coy Volante, nine Chini Boom gets control, and 12 Say Magique, first up for Waller and J Mac. Third leg, uh, one Bella Nipatina, two Magic Time, three Antino, six Volana, and 14 Samana. And we'll come home with three Light Infantry Man, four Boy D'Argent, six Adelaide River, 10 Spirit Ridge, 15 Faulkner Park. 100 bucks gets you 22.22%. Your best in value? Yeah, my best comes up in race two, number five, Peril. Uh, quite keen there. And a couple of value later in the day. I do like race nine, number three, Light Infantry Man. I think it's good value. And race seven, number three, Comrade Rosa. My best is race two, number five, Peril. Uh, and if Freedom Rally starts in the first, it is going to be very hard to beat. My value, race eight, number one, Bella Nipatina and Spirit Region last uh, as a bonus to that one, let's head south to Sandown where the rail moves to the five metre mark. Currently soft and a bit cold with some down there, so I don't know how much drier it gets. Our standard hillside I think should play fairly well. And we're going to start with the two-year-olds over a 1,000 metres. And I thought interest point was uh, impressive last start. I can go three from three here. Uh, jumped in front last time, snagged back over a thousand, which I hate. Was still able to pretty much win that softly and get a similar run here. Uh, all things being equal, I think can win again. That's about all I want to talk about here. Who do you like? I went the same way. I thought it was a good win last start. I thought it ground down the winner quite nicely. I know there's a bit of a weight turnaround, but I just think it's it's a better better horse. Yep. Um, and I think Sandown will suit it to be able to, um, you know, that Caulfield track did kind of favour Blue Renegade in front than, than the others. So I think it's going to be hardest to beat interest point. And I thought Husk was the main danger. Um, good win first up and looks a horse, promising horse. Up next, we've got a 1,400 metre three-year-old race. Who have you found in this one? Yeah, I've gone for number seven here, La Fracas. Um, only had the one start, won a maiden at Pakenham, but sometimes that is a really good indication for some of these races. Um, sent for the kill there, was well-backed, fancied, and won quite comfortable. Against the horse, I think it goes okay. So um, drops a few kilos on that. Uh, hard to beat. Without a great deal of confidence, I'm going to tip Mogwai. I just did not go a yard in that heavy track at Rose Hill uh, last time out. My concern is when you actually go back through a lot of that Sydney form, it's a little bit uh, thin. Mm. It's, it's not It's not brilliant. Um, but I was, I was sort of against the favourite here. I thought it looked a bit weak at the end of 400 metres and his dream, so I wanted to take it on. Um, yes, so yeah. I'll, say, I'll say that La Fracas is a live chance for me as well. Um, agree, looks a nice style of a horse with some upside. Uh, the third is a 1,400-metre benchmark 70 
mm, a nearly impossible race, to be honest. I thought uh, I'm going to – two I may back will be Name Dropper in Vale Mountain. I think Vale Mountain can bounce back. Just had no luck at all last time out. I uh, was flying before that. Name Dropper, nice win up in Queensland and has trolled up well. I think three jump outs for this. Uh, may have some ability and probably rolls forward, which is never a bad thing in these sort of races. Who have you found? Yeah, I've gone for Name Dropper as well um, for similar reasons um, that you have alluded to there. Nice win at its only start. Sent for a break. Resumes here in a very winnable race. I thought the main danger might be the five out of Compton mm-hmm. coming over from Agreed. South Australia. And yeah. um, when I found the gap there last start, uh, shot through and ran quite quite well. I thought uh, double figure odds would be is of interest. The fourth is a 1300 metre benchmark 70. Anything for us here? Yeah, tricky little affair here. I've gone for number 12 here, Miss Rumbini uh, from the Price Kent Yard. Um, Going okay. Uh, first up was pretty good. Only just uh, got nutted there. Prior to that, um, ran a nice race before it went out for a spell um, in a listed race at Caulfield, coming off its win at Mornington um, in a maiden. So I thought the resumption was good at Pakenham. Interesting, they brought it straight here. Uh, gate 12, I think it can run really well. I like the form around Here Comes a Star. I think it's all pretty strong stuff, jewellery, harder glass and co., Straight to 1,300 metres from 11 maybe be the concern, but I think it's a nice run for Linda Meach. She generally doesn't uh, dilly-dally, so it'll probably be up close to the pace, closer to the pace than it has been. Uh, I, yeah, like, like we said about Miss Rabani, uh, and I have something again on Stylish, uh, even though I thought it got every possible opportunity up front last time out. It is a big price, and I may just cover that. I wanted to take on Betrana, just mentioned a favourite because neither of us have, um, but I think I'd... Having looked back through it, I think it can win. I'm not necessarily knocking it, just looking for a better price around it. The fifth is, I think, a four-year-old race. Four-year-old and up for the mares. Benchmark 74. And two hopes for me again here at a price. Great taste. I had a, had a pretty awful run last time. I had to sit sort of a pair back outside the lead without cover. Uh, and I thought it still did quite well to, to fight out the finish there. And if it gets a bit of cover here, I think it will be in the... Uh, in the photo finish uh, with Blue Moon, who gets a softer run, needs a bit of luck, but is peaking third up. Maybe once further, but uh, has been going well. I know we both had cat eyes on it all prep. Who have you come up with, though? Yeah, look, I've, I've settled on Aquana. I think this yeah. is a, a, a winnable race for it. Um, if you go back to starts, it um, was last on the turn at Caulfield, come along the fence, and um, that was a really, really good run. Um, and then, again, last start, finished off down the middle of the track, which was probably uh, a little bit more biased, again, um, track for the for the leaders. So I think here, gate seven uh, gets all the right uh, set up here, and I think it's it's definitely the one to beat around $5. Um, fairly key. We've got a mile benchmark 78 up next. Who do you like in this one? Uh, it's nice to see they still keep dishing up five dollars on hard to cross. I thought, this, um, oh, it's, I, to be honest, I thought it was a moral five bucks. Yeah, mm. I thought five dollars was pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just, I, I just looked at it and went, it's just going to get the same run again. Yep. This last start, it's going to sit one out, one back from gate four. It's got the claim, so it's only carrying the fifty-eight and a half, so it does go up. A little bit in weight on last start, but it had plenty in hand, plenty in hand there, and all these are carrying fifty nine sixty, so it's pretty level weights um, across the board here. So I thought I tried to find something that could beat it, and I really couldn't. I thought it was it was um, clear standout here. Main danger Concord, um, the overseas import uh, first up here um, has some really good form uh, in the UK. I think it can run well. Uh, it's an interesting starter. Yeah, I don't have much to add. I agree. Hard to cross my best of the day. Get, like, they've got it right to, to just keep going to sand down every two weeks over a mile and keep winning. So cool. And uh, he's beset just come out, so I don't need to talk about that one. The seventh is I might throw a big brew into a quaddy. That's about the only the horse I'll even mention. 1,000 metre benchmark 84. Uh, lightly raced Etienne. Uh, did some good things last prep. Just uh, 
was pinned to the inside last start there, but uh, built nicely, uh, lightly raced, some nice trials for this, and uh, I think will lead, if not lead, sit outside Miss Chrissy. Uh, I think can run well. Miss Chrissy is the only danger. It gets a quieter time. It's been ridden a bit quieter at times this prep as well. And that'll do me. I was annoyed I missed squad actually win last time out for Bedge. Good after I half made a case for it uh, a few weeks back. Anyway, that's it. The rest of these aren't going any good, I don't know. Anything? You're going to tip, port, you're going to tip port out. I'm gonna, no, I'm going to tip Wonder Reach. Okay. Um, actually, took yeah. care of Miss Chrissy last start. Yep. I think it um, can sit in behind again here. I think the, the one gate's um, a perfect setup here. And I think it. If it gets out and gets a clear run at the right time, it's going to be hard to beat. Um, thousand metres, pace on, gets the sit. And um, again, I think uh, now it's one, uh, can win again. Uh, so I had it on top. I thought Etienne, you're right. Um, interested to see how it comes back, this preparation. I think it's the main danger. The eighth is a 1,400-metre handicap, or they're all just here again. They go around together every two weeks. Who's going to win this time? Yeah, tough, tough, tough race here. Um, I've gone for um, showmanship. Okay. Um, I think it's just a little bit different form line here. Uh, first up here, uh, always seems to have some troubles, but first up here, uh, only finished three lengths behind Tuvalu um, in the, on the Wangum at uh, – Wunamble, first up on a slow track. Um, and that wasn't a bad run, to be honest. Uh, it was back towards the tail of the field and finished off quite nicely there. Had the had the wide gate and snagged back. Um, hopefully it can get into the right draw here. And if it's improved off that, I don't think it's um, going to have to be too much better to beat these. So I've got it on top. Um, yeah, maybe Pescara could be a danger resuming. Mm. Yeah, unbeaten on top of the ground showmanship, I just noticed as well. Anyway, I'll see if that dries out enough. I thought the two that fought out the finish last time can do it again, Nicolini Vito and uh, what was the other one? Windstorm. Uh, Windstorm. Yeah, I thought they're both, you know, both up and going well enough. And as a marker suggests, they'll run well. Um, you've piqued my interest a little bit in uh, showmanship. And I had Is It Me, Is it me next best. Windstorm's got a pretty good strike rate. Um, yeah, absolutely. And as I said, Bedgood, once he gets into these horses, he, he trains his uh, used horses really well. So he's yeah, scary. Yeah. The ninth is 1,800 metre handicap. And I am. I looked at this and I thought there is absolutely no pace in this race bar dashing and putting. I think they can go across and control. I think they can jiggy jog for a mile and I think they can fight at the finish. Now, one's seven bucks, one's 15. We'll go with that. Jimmy the Bear keeps trying hard, keeps just getting stuck in races where there's no pace up front. So uh, if it can posse up, yeah, is also is an obvious life chance. I think it's, the horse itself has done anything wrong this prep. Um, it's going as well as it can be. But I think that's about the race. Cadmus, if you like it, I wouldn't knock either. Yeah, I'm going to go Cadmus. Um, you're right. Uh, the pace in the race is a little bit of a concern. Um and probably prefers the track uh, more on the good side than the soft. So, you know, probably taking a little bit of a risk there. But um, I'm going to go for it anyway because I don't think this is an overly strong race. Um, and I think it's uh, form this time in is good enough to run a bold race here. So uh, Cadmus on top for me. Beautiful. Do you want to give us your quaddy for Sandown Hillside? I shall do my best for you, my friend. Thank you. Uh, let's see how we go here. I'm going to go number one. Hard to cross. Number five, Falcon of Malta. Number nine, Concord. And number 13, Jabba Walkers. In the next leg, I'm going to go number one, Scissor Step. Number six, Home Rule. Number 12, Etienne, and number 18, Wonder Reach. We'll take on and leave Miss Chrissy out. Mm -hmm. In the third leg, race eight, I'm going to go number two, Showmanship. Number four, Nicolini Vito. 
number eight, Windstorm, and number 10, Pesquero. And to finish the day, I'm going to go number one, Smoke and Romans, number six, Bell Toro, number seven, Dashing, number four, Jimmy the Bear, and number 16, Cadmus. Cool. Throw pudding in if you like as well, peoples. Who's nah, your, <laughs> your, your like best, and, best and value? <laughs> Uh, just just teasing. Just That's teasing. Fine. My value bet is race eight, number two, showmanship. I think it's um, going to be very hard to beat. And my best bet is going to be race five, number 14, Aquana. I'm going to make my best race six, number one, hard to cross. Around the $5 mark looks good to me. My value, that bracket in the last, just for Beaver. Race nine, number eight, pudding and dashing as well. Uh, I think they can fight the finish out there. Have you had a look at Sydney? Do you want to tip this Masara horse in the highway? Oh, shit, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to be on race three, number two, Know Thyself. Yep, saw that coming. Um, yeah, I had to just for you. <laughs> um, I thought last start win of race two, number 18, Yiska. I thought that was very good. I think it'll be uh, set up to run well again. And I'll tip race six, number six, left field. I thought uh, it was a bold run on the Worst side of the track um, last start and uh, got beat by a horse coming down the middle. So I think it can run well again. Excellent. The, I thought race seven, the two Godolphin horses can fight at the finish there. Uh, Hanau resuming the grey and Pisanello, uh, who was just stuck wide last time out. Franz Joseph, race nine, number six, should get lead that and be hard to beat as well. Uh, da, 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 and at Belmont, and race... Horse. Yeah, race three, number five at Belmont. Ollie's choice will think can win again. A little bonus one there for the Maltese. Thank you, Beaver. Thank you, Dexter. Good luck to everyone tomorrow in the PCTC final. Hopefully not too much after I got blown out of the water last Saturday. But anyway, um, check that out on Facebook, PCTC. Tipping comp springs on the way. I think there's Euros, soccer coming up, all sorts of good stuff there. So I've plugged out this week. Uh, take care, guys. Good punting this weekend. Enjoy Stradbroke Day, and we'll chat again shortly.